Hello! In this video, I will present our ICML 2021 paper Learning Intra-Batch Connections for Dmetric Learning. Let's start with what actually is Dmetric Learning. So in Dmetric Learning, we want to learn a distance function between images of objects. So for example, we could have images of cups and trees and want to get the distance between those, or we could also use the distance between persons. So in this case, we want to learn a distance between persons. And as we can see on the images, the distance between those two persons should be pretty high because one person is blonde, the other person has brown hair. So we want a low similarity score and a large distance. While for those two persons here, that actually are the same person, we want actually a high similarity score and a small distance such that during test time we then can use a simple threshold or nearest neighbor search to find objects that are of the same class or in this case to find persons that are of the same class. So for those two we actually would want our distance to be larger than a threshold such that our network predicts this is not the same person. For those other two images here we would want our distance to be smaller than the threshold because it actually is the same person. So the goal of deep metric learning is that we want to learn a distance function over objects using convolutional neural networks and some special loss functions. And the goal is that similar objects are closer together as I already showed in the last slide and this similar objects should be far apart. So the person with the blonde hair should be far apart from the person with the brown hair. Or for example, in this image on the right, we can see lots of clusters here of CAP 2011 dataset, which consists of lots of different bird species. So for example, in this cluster down here, we have a bird with a red head that is well separated, for example, from the cluster up there, which consists of some brown bird. But how do we learn our convolutional neural network and what loss functions do we typically use in deep metric learning? So the two that are typically used are contrastive loss and triplet loss. In contrastive loss, we have one relation that we take into account. This means we have a so-called anchor sample that you can see on the left indicated by A. And we compare this anchor sample with positive samples or with one positive sample indicated by P or with one negative sample indicated by N. In triplet loss, we actually then take two relations into account. So one relation between our anchor and our negative sample and one relation between the anchor and the positive sample. And while in the case of contrastive loss, we actually just want the distance between A and B to be small and the distance between A and N to be large, in triplet loss, we want the distance between A and N to be larger by some margin than the distance between A and P. So we relate the distances between the anchor and the negative and the anchor and the positive sample. But in a data set that consists of n samples, we have O n squared pairs and O n cubed triplets. And the vast majority of them is actually uninformative, which means the vast majority of them is pretty simple. So for example, if we compare on the left side, in the contrastive loss example, the anchor and the negative image, then they are highly different. And it's highly likely that also in the beginning of the training, our network will predict that those two are not of the same class. And this then might lead to slow convergence and some special sampling techniques are required. But the other thing is that in a batch of size B, 
the contrastive on the triplet laws only take b divided by 2 and 2 times b divided by 3 relations into account, while there are b to the power of 2 relations in a batch. And the question now is, could we take the global structure of the batch into account and not just few relations in the batch? So here comes our approach into place. So how do we tackle this problem with our approach? So the high level idea of our approach is actually that we want to take a mini batch graph into account that is shown on the right. So in this mini batch graph, each sample in the mini batch represents one node and each node, so each sample in the mini batch, has some node feature vectors assigned to it that describe their visual features. And then we want to utilize message passing networks to exchange contextual information between the samples in the mini batch and by this take the global structure into account and explore the embedding space in its entirety. To be specific, we first construct a batch that consists of p classes and n samples of each class. And we then feed all of those samples through our backbone CNN. And the backbone CNN is actually a CNN with shared weights, which means it is the same CNN for each sample. And it gives us some initial feature vectors then for each of the samples. Then we use those initial feature vectors build our mini batch graph and use the initial feature vectors as the node feature vectors of the corresponding node, so of the corresponding sample in our mini batch. And then we let the samples communicate among each other. And in the end, we optimize our communication network, so our message passing network, MPN, and our CNN in an end-to-end -end fashion. I already shortly said now message passing network. So what exactly happens here? We actually have a graph with node feature vectors. And then we give our nodes the possibility to send messages among each other. In our case, we want to take all relations in the mini batch into account. So each node in the mini batch graph sends a message to each other node in the mini batch graph. For example, here the node on the left gets messages indicated by the red lines from all other nodes in the graph. And then the feature vectors of, so the node feature vectors of this sample are updated by taking all messages from the neighbors, so all, in our case, node feature vectors of the neighbors into account by multiplying them with uh, learned weight matrix W and summing them up, which is called aggregation. But we want to give our network the possibility to weigh different messages differently, according to their importance for the receiving node. For this, we then add so-called attention scores, alpha, and those attention scores actually depend on the sending node and the receiving node. So while the weight matrix W was the same for all other messages, the attention scores depend on the nodes, so on the sending and receiving nodes, and they are also computed in a learned way. So this changes actually our aggregation update formula to add this alpha value in here. And this is then repeated for all other nodes in the graph, such that all nodes in the graph have updated feature vectors. This then can be repeated for several steps. So the information propagation um, is across the graph can be done for several iterations. And then finally, in the end, we have a graph with updated context aware node feature vectors. To visualize again a bit what this means is if you have a look at the right side, then we can see that the feature vectors of samples of the same class get more and more similar over the message passing steps. So during optimization then, we optimize our backbone CNN and our MPN in an end-to-end -end fashion. 
And we can simply use cross entropy loss and not any advanced triplet loss or contrastive loss where we have to sample some specific pairs or triplets because we already took the relations in the mini batch during our message passing steps into account. And during inference, as we optimize in an end to end way, we can just use the features after our backbone CNN. And so we don't add any complexity as test time. What does this give us in terms of results? So our results are as the following. And you can see here, ours is the last line. And we actually are best in all recall at one and NMI scores on CAP, CAS and Stanford online products data sets where Recall at one actually evaluates the ranking performance of our network and NMI evaluates the clustering performance of our network. And the higher, the better. The fourth data set that we evaluate on is in shop data set. And also here we achieve best results in all metrics. And to give you some intuition what this look, these data sets look like, we have here some qualitative results where you can see, for example, samples from cars, where cars contains images of cars, or samples from in-shop data set that contains samples of online shops for clothing. To analyze our approach in terms of robustness, we actually analyzed how the performance changes when we vary the number of message passing steps as well as the number of attention sets. On the two left figures, you can see exactly this evaluation on CAP 200-2011 and CARS 196 datasets. And you can see that the performance drops with increasing number of message passing steps, which actually is in line with a lot of literature on message passing networks, because you have this effect of over smoothing if you apply many message passing steps. And on the right side, actually, we could see if we increase the embedding dimension of our final embeddings that we use to compare and compute the distances, then we can also increase our performance. And then we also compare our training behavior to the training behavior of the group loss. And the group loss is a paper that actually also takes all relations in a mini batch in some kind of way into account, but by applying label propagation methods and this in a rule-based manner. And the authors of the group loss actually observed less overfitting on the training data which means that they induced some kind of implicit regularization to the data. And as can be seen on the left, in our approach, we even overfit less on CAP 200-2011 in this case compared to the group loss, which means that we induce even more implicit regularization with our approach. So to conclude, we proposed an approach that can be used to train neural networks for deep metric learning without the need for careful triplet selection and complex sampling schemes. For this, we use the message passing network that allows us to capture intra-batch relations in order to obtain stronger embeddings for deep metric learning. And we show state-of-the-art results without using the MPN at test times, which means that we don't increase the complexity during inference. So if you want to know more, have a look into the paper.